Shannon, what's your reaction? I'm disappointed. It feeds into a old, outdated stereotype that women shouldn't be in a male-dominated field like reporter. And how is she qualified to ask a football question to a professional athlete? For me, Skip, having played in the NFL for 14 years, I didn't know a whole lot of female beat reporters, but Lynn DeBruin did work the beat at the Broncos. Mm -hmm. Rest her soul, she passed a couple mm. of years ago. I, I paid her the same respect that I gave Adam Schefter, mm -hmm. who came in with he me did. in 1990. Yep. Woody, Page, Woody Page, Mark Kisler. Yep. I gave them the same respect. Mm -hmm. She asked him a football question. I would assume that if she's in a NFL locker room, the fifth week of the season, there's a pretty good chance she's a reporter, and she had to go through probably a more strenuous interview than a male for the simple fact she is a female. And her editor that Skip. Maybe. No, ain't maybe no maybe, not. Skip. For the first for the first for the sake of the because we still have this situation. We shouldn't even be discussing this. This should be a non-issue in 2017. And people think, and some, and, and I get that. A lot of well, you never played. Okay, just because I never played, does that mean that I can't watch and see and understand what's going on? Skip, she did not ask him, hey, Cam, when Funches run that skinny post, mm -hmm. is it inside leg up in seven steps or outside leg up in seven steps? She didn't ask him that. She didn't ask him uh, when Funches ran the out route, is he 10 rolling the 12 or is he 12 rolling the 14? That's not what she asked. She asked him a football-related question says, seems like Devin Funches is embracing the physicality of his routes. Now, to me, that's a pretty deep football question. Hey. I liked it. So it, did I. It, it didn't qualify as a dumb question. No. And I hear a lot of dumb ones. Yes. You get a lot a lot more dumb questions, Skip. You know, mm -hmm. you get to the Super Bowl, you get a lot of people sure. that's really not reporters. They ask you, what's your favorite color? Will you marry me? And all kind of foolishness. Mm -hmm. But I would think during the regular season, Skip, it's more these are people that cover the sport. This young lady and the gentlemen that cover, that are beat writers, they cover on a day-to-day -day basis. So, and Cam should be familiar because I, if I'm not mistaken, she mentioned that she introduced herself to him last year when she started. And Cam still didn't know her name, but that's neither here nor there. You don't have to know everybody's name, but I think there's a certain level of respect that you should give her for the simple fact she's doing her job. She didn't ask him what's the ingredients in Ratatouille. Mm. I know some people think that's, you know, women, hey, you You would know the answer to that question. I like Ratatouille. Right? Yep. I don't really like Ratatouille, but I just happen to know mm -hmm. some of the ingredients that, that goes into it. Skip, this is sad, because you remember in 2012, he also called a female reporter sweetheart. Mm. Cam, it's 2017. <sighs> women are embracing and, and, and getting into male-dominated fields. If you know, I don't know if you followed this, Skip, but for the first time, they had a female that com, uh, completed the Marine infantry trip. So she's going to be an first time, a, a lady. Give the lady credit. Mm -hmm. Damn, don't be disrespectful. And to, <laughs> it's funny asking, Skip, I could see if she was asking him smash concept. Well, Cam, on the smash concept, when you got the guy to run the five-yard hitch to hold a corner in cover two and you got the smash hit, which is the seven right by, Skip, she wasn't getting all technical like that, Skip. Mm -hmm. And even if she did, how do you know that she doesn't go home and, and look, watch, watch stuff? How do you know that she doesn't have a, a former professional athlete, a, a football player, mm -hmm. helping her understand route concepts? How do you know? You're assuming because she's a female, she couldn't possibly know what's going on. She asked him a football-related question. Give her a football-related answer and move on. Hey, say, uh, say Punch is going home. He's from the Detroit area. Hey, he grew up watching Barry Sanders, watching Megatron. He's going to have family and friends, so he's excited. I'm glad to see. And plus, he's been coming in early. He's worked on his routes before practice, after practice. Keep it like mm -hmm. that. But to, to seeing that her asking a question is beneath you answering it because you chuckle like, it's funny. Ain't find anything funny. She asked you a football-related question. She deserved a football-related answer mm. without the chuckle and without the taking abackness. Mm. Before I answer Joy's question, if you don't mind, Joy, I would like to hear your thoughts on this before I go. Well, I think Cam is incredibly immature, mm -hmm. which he's exhibited not just in this situation but throughout his career. It's really disappointing for me. I think that the NFL is better when Cam Newton is playing yep. at his highest level. He's a superstar. He's entertaining. 
and he brings a, a factor to the NFL as a, as a black quarterback that is needed. Right. And I'm a huge supporter of his. It's disappointing. I mean, you see the reaction to this all the time whenever women's credibility is questioned. It, to me, it's not surprising. We're going to talk about Terrell Pryor a little bit later on in the show. Things like that don't surprise me. It saddens me, but it doesn't surprise me. So overall, I'm disappointed. Um, I think it's obviously very disrespectful. And she's a beat reporter, so, you know, it's a little inside baseball. But that's a person that follows the team every single day. Their job is to write and cover that specific this, this team is her every day. This second year on right. the beat. And she's, yep. yeah, she's been there for a year. Now, yep. to not know her name or something, you know, it, there's a yeah. lot of reporters that yeah, have to exactly. deal with every day. That, that, to me, doesn't bother me. It's just his reaction to it is very dismissive. And if he had dismissed all of the reporters, which sometimes athletes do, you know, reporters sometimes get upset with the way that they're treated by athletes. And that's, that's more on us, you know, being maybe sometimes we're a little too sensitive and the athlete is upset. But he singled her out. Mm -hmm. He reacted to her be and specifically said he was laughing because she's a woman asking that question. About routes. And there are men in this business who have not played the sport that they cover on any competitive level. Yeah, many. At all. Many, 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 of course. So it's, you know, it's, disres it's disrespectful, but it doesn't surprise me. I, I mean, I have many friends in the business, and my experience, I mean, I've been in the business 10 years. Mm -hmm. I started as an intern in Miami and sports radio, and I've dealt with it on every level. It's, it's a part of the business, unfortunately, but uh, it's just, it's sad to see it on this level. And more importantly, like, do we just don't need this right now, Cam. <laughs> like, there is enough going on. Now, now, now you have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. it's, it shows his heart, unfortunately, because it was a, you could tell it was a natural reaction to yeah. her asking the question. He did. He, he revealed himself. Right. And at this like point it. in his career, you can't use the excuse that he's not used to being around female reporters. Yeah. So uh, it's, you know, it's still where we are. It's 2017. Unfortunately, it's still where we are. But I, you know, I tell all young women that are getting into the business, they're going to deal with this on some level. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to carry yourself with respect, care about your reputation. And unfortunately, as a woman, you have to be smarter and better. And mm -hmm. you have no room for mistakes or error. And you have to mm -hmm. try harder than everyone else in the room. But it's just disappointing. So just for the record, what's that? You I'm, I'm just trying to figure out, Skip. We went from three weeks to Cam. What's wrong with Cam, to play, Cam playing great, winning against the Patriots, to this? Have we ever seen a quarterback I that actually think there's a connection to what you just laid out. <laughs> I think we that's what just happened. But real quick about Joy. I occasionally have to bite my lip on this show in breaks when we have an athlete or an ex-athlete come in and sit down and refer to Joy as honey or sugar or maybe sweetheart. Yeah. And it just grates on my nerves. <laughs> and... I, I haven't said anything. I've told her I don't like it, and she rolls with it. But just for the record, she grew up in a household with an older brother who is now residing alongside you in the Pro mm -hmm. Football Hall of Fame. So she gets it, you right. know? She can talk it, feel it, know it. She knows football. She knows basketball. She knows sports. Right. So back to Cam Newton. I, I'm with you times 10 on disappointment, frustration with, because th this this man has star power to him. Yeah. He has charisma. Mm -hmm. He has a huge thousand watt smile that can light up any room or any stadium. He dabbed two years ago and it just took over the NFL. Mm -hmm. And it was fun, man. It was fun to watch. Even if I was rooting against him, it, it, you couldn't help wait for the dab. Right. And he had a whole lot of reasons to dab that <laughs> year, didn't he? Yep. And. I, I want him to get it, and he's now 28 years of age in his seventh NFL season, having won a national championship at Auburn. So he, he knows the media. He's, he's been dealing with media for a long, long time. Right. And he still doesn't get it. And what frustrates me the most is lack of leadership, whatever those things are, intangibles or skills or whatever. Wh whatever, you know, I'm, again, I'm over the top. I love Dak Prescott, but what do I love most about him? His leadership abilities. Mm -hmm. He took over the franchise as a rookie and he changed the whole culture of it in ways that Cam is still struggling to change in Carolina. And remember, right out of the box as a rookie, he had quotes about, uh, it's too long to read, but there's a big quote in ESPN, the magazine, about how he's a lion and nobody else on the team is a lion. They don't get it. And in the end, he said, I'm just trying to get everybody else on my level. This is 2011. Mm -hmm. And then he got frustrated after those two huge games. Murray threw for 422 at Arizona in his first ever NFL game mm -hmm. and backed it right up against Aaron Rodgers back in Carolina. 
with 432. And man, we all thought, whew, this go. is it. Yep. Behold, Cam Newton, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. He's going to revolutionize football. And he did running the football. And he did win an MVP two years ago. But remember the long dry spell in there when he would sit on the bench and sort of remove himself from the mess that is the team and he'd put the towel over his head like, I, I don't want to associate with you guys. You, you guys, just, I, I'm, I'm above you guys. You're, you're all beneath me. And now it comes all the way to he had such a hard time last year, such a hard time early this year. Now back to your point, he finally had a – a breakthrough, breakout, big game. Mm -hmm. He beat Tom Brady at Tom Brady. He was really good in that game, Cam Newton. And I started thinking, is he just feeling himself now like he's back in charge? Remember, that's his weekly media session. It was not a one-on-one -on -one interview. Right. This is the one that's going on Sports Center, right? Yep. This is the highlight show interview Correct. that you're forced to do as the face of the franchise every Wednesday. Quarterback gets up at the big yeah. podium. He gets to the podium. And he has been sitting on a hot seat for about a year and a quarter until this week. And I started thinking, well, is he just sort of back in charge now? Like, I can sort of get away with anything? D am I surprised that he thinks like that? No, because I'm, I'm here to tell you a bunch of players of course they do. like that. Yes. You know it, and yes. I know it, and you definitely know it. But I'm just shocked that he would say it publicly. So especially in front of the group. Right. It wasn't just like he sat down with her one-on-one -on -one and she asked him a football question and he started laughing just d between, between the two of them. Right. Although that would have been just as bad, but at least he would he, he humiliated her in front of the world, basically. Of her peers. And, and all of her peers. And I thought, does he have a bone to pick with her because maybe she's been too critical of him over this long dry spell mm -hmm. dating back to the – the post Super Bowl, you know, obviously they lost the game, and then he had the the big negative press right. conference, which I didn't have any problem with, but a lot of people did. And no, he didn't even really know who she was because she confronted him thereafter, and she's been the beat reporter since October, so it's about a year, yes. full year. And she questioned him about why he would would speak that way to her, and then she asked him, according to Scott Fowler, who writes a column for the Charlotte Observer. In the end, do you, do you know my name? And he said, no, I don't know your name. I don't, I don't know who you are. And it's just hard for me to believe that the face of the franchise, because Shannon Sharp would be media savvy, but but again, you got it. You knew how to play the game off the right. field. You, but they, they trap skill. You have to. They're on the pl – when you yeah, travel to go out of town, yeah. those beat writers are on the plane with you. S sometimes, not always, but sometimes. Well, I was always yeah. on – you didn't travel with the team? A, a couple of times I did only because it was to Green Bay and I couldn't okay. get to Green Bay. <laughs> okay. You know, it's just too hard to fly there. So it, that, those are the only two times I ever went on the plane. But occasionally yeah. that would happen. But for the most part, uh, yeah. Kiz and, yeah. and uh, Woody and Adam Schefter, okay. those guys, they travel with Okay. Us. All right. So the point is, if you're the face of the franchise, you should the, – they're important people yeah. to you. you. You should have some rapport with them. And I assume she's tried to interview him one-on-one -on -one before. Right. Right. I assume – and he, he just blanked her out. And so, again, he didn't seem to have any bone to pick with her. No. There's no negative because he didn't even know who she was. Right. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1, First Things First, with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.